Hey, Trueflation Nation, back again. Happy Monday. Inflation is flat, 23.8%. We've lost over the last three years. So we're still losing money if you look at it in an aggregated perspective. But just at the moment, it's 2.39%. We've got an interesting week in front of us. Uh, lots of different outcomes. As you can see, we've got consumer confidence data coming in. We've got jolt job data, the Federal Reserve, in, in, you know, about interest rates. That's on Wednesday. And by the way, on Wednesday, I'll be at NASDAQ TV on a panel around and talking about interest rates, macro, the economy, where's it all going. Uh, we've also got more jobless claims. How much is that? How many people are actually claiming for jobless numbers? The jobs report by the BLS. Um, and then ultimately, what do we have here? 20% of the S&P 500 report earnings this week. So we have earnings report. We had a lot of reports last week. If you all remember, Amazon, Google, uh, Meta all had their reports last week. Um, so we're going to see more reports coming this week. So it's going to be a good week. I wanted to share with you quickly uh, before we go into, and we have Halloween on the 31st too, by the way. So it's, uh, I'll talk to you a bit later about booflation. What is booflation? But before I go down that path, I wanted to just share with you some of the work that we've been undergoing, right? A lot of people ask us, why are we decentralizing the data that we're aggregating? Why do we need to do that? Um, and I have put together this concept that we're working on called a data DAO. What is a data DAO? Why are you setting up a data DAO? Who needs another DAO? Why, what does this work and how does this work? And there are two core things that really matter in the work that we're doing around Truflation. It's number one, the methodology. How are we actually allocating all the data that we aggregate into inflationary index in the true CPI? And why is that different to the BLS? And why does that matter? So that matters for the sense that I'll come to that later, but let's not get distracted. Um, but what I'm trying to do is that's number one, right? So the methodology, the transparency in terms of how we do it, how it's done, having that tested, and we're working with a number of universities to strengthen that methodology over the next couple of months. At the same time, we've already started working with existing universities and some of our reports, especially around the housing data, is in partnership with Penn State University. So we're just in that process of strengthening our methodology and going deeper into the sets uh, associated with the 18 million items that we track. The second element is the governance associated with that methodology. It is essential that it governing that methodology and the way that that methodology can be changed is very transparent and anybody knows how they can participate in the governance in order to impact the methodology, add new classes, add different types of weightings, why that should be discussed, and why that should be adjusted accordingly, or how new data sets coming into the mix are going to change the impact of specific items in there, or within a specific category that lead up into Truflation. And why is this so important? Today, there's some $4.4 trillion. I don't even know how big that is. That's a lot of money though, right? Um, so $4.4 trillion are out there and linked to bonds. So people are borrowing money, protecting the people lending them the money against inflation. So these inflationary numbers matter to the tune of $4.4 billion. Another stat, $2.3 billion in just trading revenue is made by the 15 banks, top 15 banks, by trading these, creating these products. That's the revenue that they make alone on just creating these products. And so it's a big industry of significant size and the inflation that is coming for and used as the foundation for all of these $4.4 trillion in loans is editable. So they go back and change the metrics six months back. The methodology is changeable based on the whim of an administration and 
it's not exactly transparent in terms of how they allocate and calculate and, and uh, assign the calculations to the specific weightings associated with all the data that they aggregate. And so we feel that all of those elements are important factors to consider. And this is why we decided to tackle trueflation and bring out a true inflation. So here we've put a document together, which I'll be publishing on our website. What is a data DAO? What does it mean? So today we have 60 sources at aggregate on a daily basis, 18 million items with three price feeds per item on a census level, not on a panel basis. And it's all transparent, unverifiable, unver immutable, permissionless. Anybody can do this um, and we can't change it. And it's published on six or seven different blockchains already today. So we make all of this available uh, versus 80,000 items that the government tracks on a monthly basis, editable, manual with 477 employees going around and the, having a thousand household panel tell them how they're spending that money and rotating that every single month. And that is a representation of how every household spends in the, in the US. And so we think that we've built this DAO with three core or trueflation with three core things in mind, right? The DAO, our decentralized network, which we call true data and our governance model, right? Because I mentioned right at the beginning, governance is a really important element in driving this. So the Trueflation Data DAO, what is it, right? It's really about um, the ability to compose and identify uh, what we're working on in terms of how we make this all decentralized and our goal and how do we stay on top of the goal and the vision to bring to you indexes that you can see transparently and see the underlying assets associated with it. Um, so what are the individual data sets that we need to be adding? What are the different categories we should be creating? And what are the interesting innovative indexes that we should create or we should enable and provide tools to professionals to allow them to create the metavore index, the carnivore index, or the EV index, the solar index, the carbon credit index, whatever you would like to create, what is important to the people and how can they then un identify the underlying commodities? What's the weighting of those commodities? What's the exposure of the overall index versus the underlying assets? And how could products and financial instruments, e.g. lending, borrowing, be created using those indexes and the underlying assets with the associated methodology. To do that, we've decentralized not just the storing of the data. We're in the process of decentralizing the actual utility of the database so that everybody can access the database. Everybody owning a token owns a portion of the database. And we're building out this network to ensure censorship resistance, permissionless participation across the board for this. And if you're seeing what's happening in Canada, in Europe around censorship, and if you listen to Trueflation Nation over the couple of oh, my pod, our podcasts, you will have realized that DSA has come in Europe, so censorship's coming into Europe, and it's already hit Canada. So all of these things are beginning to come to life. And imagine now, all of a sudden, there's this independent entity that is trying to bring to market a inflation calculator that people are going to believe that is actually more detailed than the way we track it and has more credibility in the marketplace because it's been approved and the methodology has been developed, the transparency in terms of how it's calculated, as well as the nature of participation and the products that have been built out around this. Ooh, we got to shut that down. But you can't because it's decentralized, maintained by a whole bunch of different node operators. And to that extent, we are building out the two Trueflation stream networks. And as a part of that, we will be enabling computation. So you can calculate your own index off the RWA information, the real world asset data that we are pricing, that we have been aggregating for 10 years back every single day across 18 million consumer items and a whole suite of commodities, metals, weather, 
housing, labor, transportation, etc., etc., consumer confidence. All of these elements we will be bringing and sharing with you through this decentralized network. And we're super excited about that. Um, and one of the people, a lot of people ask me, why don't you just set this up as a SaaS model? And there are three reasons why we don't set this up as a SaaS model. Our view is a SaaS model is basically a wrapper on top of a Postgres database or any other. It could be a MongoDB database. It doesn't really matter. But ideally, it is just and simply it is just a wrapper. Not even ideally. It is simply a wrapper. They do workflows all using maybe JavaScript on top of this database. And it could be an Oracle database too, by the way. <laughs> um, either way, it's very centralized. It's not censorship resistant. It's done in a private room and not everybody can always participate in that. And so our view was rather than building just another wrapper, how do we build utility? Rather than just putting storage on the blockchain, how do we bring utility on the blockchain and ownership in the token that's represented across this Web3 native, Byzantine fault tolerant, consensus led decentralized relational database. That's what we're building. And we're making this available to all of you. And that's how we calculate trueflation. And that's why I think what we're doing is super important. And I, I, me, the team, we're super excited in going down this path and creating this amazing uh, future for all of us. Anyway, that's more than enough on the rant today. I wish everybody a happy week, happy Monday. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing and enjoy the week. Thank you, everybody.